jealousy is 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 um, I might be jealous of you for being uh, uh, let's say so um, okay. learned learned in Bhagavad Gita. Okay, whatever. Okay, so if I become learned in, in Bhagavad Gita, then I'm no longer jealous of you. But oh, okay. if okay. if I if if I want you to to uh, be hurt, you know, uh, over the head, you know, and then lose your great memory. This is evil, Chaitanya Charanji. Okay, that's a very categorical difference. Yeah, this is evil. Yeah, this is evil. If I if my intention is I want to say things about Chaitanya Charanji that will hurt him. No, that's you know to to do that is evil. To to say um, I want to offer constructive criticism to this devotee because I see him actually hurting other devotees. And I want to make sure that one, he's aware of it, two, that maybe he could correct it and not hurt other devotees. And then you see everything gets everything's elevated to a higher level. Yeah. So so the idea is dialogue. It's all the locus of truly constructive criticism of true evolving and upliftment is dialogue the it's it's only when uh we become at odds with each other and we don't engage in dialogue and we simply uh complain on the side and we uh, uh convince others um that in something that will hurt um someone uh then that's 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 evil If our intention is to hurt. So, you know, this is the Hatimata offense. The Hatimata Aparada, the first Aparada of the chanting of the holy names. To blaspheme means to make them less than who they are. If someone, if, if, if uh, I see a devotee, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, accidentally stepping on the toes of other devotees, just with his, as he walks. Well, if if I simply call him, he's nothing but a toe stepper, you know. Um, I mean, it's a stupid example, but but the idea is that I I that one offense or that or uh, not offense that one um, not good thing that he does, I can I I see that as the whole person. That's a problem. Um. So again, this is a form of reductionism. I take a the weakest part of a person and take that as the whole person. Mm, that makes sense. That's yeah. reductionism. And then to go further to our topic, to give some interpretation on the holy name. There we go. Now there's the apparad of giving some interpretation. And here I am today. I could be looking like I'm giving some interpretation on the holy name. Okay? So the, what does that mean to give an interpretation? What this means is to take a universal mantra, as the Maha Mantra, and say that it means this, as if it only means this. I like this whole reductionism because I was recently asked this question that there are some there is a, some study done by the uh, Dr. David Brian Wolf about mantra chanting leading to helping people decrease their depression and uh, negative habits. So this question came up: Isn't that a mundane interpretation? So I corresponded with that devotee also. He said that you know, uh, apparently Prabhupada in BTG was. When BTG was being published, Prabhupada, devotees talked about how chanting changes the brain states, like something similar to what psychedelic drugs do. And now I don't remember the exact specifics, but Prabhupada was not very, very approving of that kind of explanation at that time. Right. But I, it, you can say that chanting has say, social dimensions, physical dimensions, neural dimensions. 
but to say that chant that is all that chanting is that is yeah. where it will become a problem that's right so, just, yeah. just like when i have colleagues telling me that uh, the gita is about um uh, uh offering the fruits of your activities you know or, or not being attached to the fruits of your acti- activities i've i've actually heard academic colleagues say that's what the whole gita is about and i say you're kidding me you're kidding that's they're kidding yeah i mean no come on mm-hmm. maybe cha- in chapters three four and five maybe there's but but it's even but even those chapters to say much more than that and so i mean you mm-hmm. know i mean so they've reduced the whole gita but then but then one colleague of mine came up to me after reading my translation of the gita several times he said he said, Graham, I think I've got it. I think, I think I see what is being said in the Gita. That the Gita is ultimately, uh, the Gita is saying that the universe is ultimately a loving place. I said, wow. I said, that's pretty good. I like that. That's not bad. See, he's moving in the right direction. That the mm-hmm. universe is ultimately a loving place. I thought that was a beautiful way of putting it. Beautiful, really. I like it. And yeah. it does seem also, uh, so it it is it is also so non sectarian in a way that is harmonious with the principles of bhakti. Mm. That's right. Yeah. The universe is ultimately a loving place. I mean, one could fill that out, you know, and go and go crazy with that statement. So it's 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 a by summer. One thing we learn in graduate studies is how to summarize things. And by the way, you do this beautifully um, in each of your presentations with your interviews, but how to summarize things without uh, reducing them. Mm. That's hard, that's hard. How to summarize things without dummying it down. Again, another form of reductionism. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about this universe is a loving place. We as devotees might also reduce the Gita this world is a place of misery. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, yeah. yeah, the Gita says that that this uh, this world is a place of misery. But you know, but the Gita doesn't just focus on this world. Yeah, and also, in a sense, gives us a way to live in this world, so that we cannot, we need not be that miserable. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Arjuna is crying at the start of the Gita, and Krishna doesn't say, "Arjuna, you are crying now." You yeah, realize this world is miserable. No need for me to speak yeah. anything more. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You've reached perfection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your state of hopelessness is exactly where you should be. You're hopeless. Good. Stay there. Yeah. That's not what happened. Mm-hmm. That is not what happened. Not at all. And when dialogue, I mean, the whole Gita is a dialogue. Mm-hmm. And and when and when um. Uh, this dharmyam samvadam, this sacred dialogue, is, is that phrase is used. Dharmyam samvadam is used by Sanjaya. Sanjaya. At the end, Sanjaya is in a fit of ecstasy when he thinks about this dialogue. So dialogue also has the effect of uplifting others. 